Hey, welcome to the show. Uh, as you know, I'm a uh, MMT -er, uh someone who follows and uh, studies modern monetary theory. Um, and one of the things that uh, people like Stephanie Chelton have said in the past is Social Security does not need um, taxes to fund it. Uh, one of the things she said, I believe, in one of her uh, many uh, lectures on uh, the financial institution, on the um, government spending and its entitlement programs, quote unquote entitlements. Um, first of all, uh, the word entitlement, uh, people paid into it one way or the other uh they they, they paid they it, the ta the taxes that uh that are taken out that's why they're specifically called social security taxes uh but at the same time uh as a sovereign a currency nation as the usa is it doesn't need those taxes the only thing, the only thing you needed to do was just put in the legislature back at 38 uh, that it's always solvent and will always be paid. Uh, not just not, not tax, not uh, the direct purpose of paying for it. Uh, anyway, so with that in mind, uh, I, I, really, I heard that Biden wants to um, Biden wants to uh, bring in a few people. Uh, as uh, new Social Security board members in, to the advisory board. And first of all, I don't really look them up. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of them. I don't know who's been on there or anything, or anything of that na nature. First of all, I didn't know until today uh, that Mitch McConnell's uh, wife was a, board, was a trustee of board, uh, on that board. Uh, she was also Secretary of Labor at that time as well. So, I mean... To me, that just tells me that that the that the social security system, the people involved in it, as far as managing it, are corrupt as hell. Um, but anyway, but I wanted to look at what the what what their uh, place in the in the government is. Uh, and according to this, uh, about the board, the Social Security Advisory Board is a bipartisan, independent federal government agency established in '94 to advise the president, the Congress, and the commissioner of Social Security on matters of policy and administration of, a, of, of the old age, survivors, and disability insurance, and the supplemental security income programs. The board has seven members appointed by the president, Senate, and House of Representatives. The function of the board is to analyzing the nation's retirement and disability systems and making recommendations with respect to how the old age survivors and disability insurance program and the uh, SSI program supported by other public and private systems can afford effectively assure uh, economic security. Uh, studying and making, uh, yeah, studying and making recommendations with, related to the coordination of programs that provide health security with social security programs, making recommendations to the president and to the Congress with respect to policies that will ensure the solvency of the old age survivor and disability insurance program, both in the short term and long term. <clears throat> Uh, making recommendations with respect to the quality of service that the administration provides to the public. Making recommendations with respect to policies and regulations regarding the old age uh, survivors and disability insurance program and the supplemental security income program. Increasing public understanding of the social security system. Making recommendations with respect to long range research and program evaluation plan for the administration. Reviewing and assessing any major studies of Social Security as may come to the attention of the board. Making recommendations with respect to such other matters as the board determines it to be appropriate. Now, the reason why I was asked or saying this, uh, let me see if I can get back to this. Is it? Uh, actually, this is one of the uh, people that he wants to bring on as uh, part of the uh, board. So this is Andrew G. Biggs. Let's see, uh, it's a senior fellow and American Enterprise uh, 
at the American Enterprise Institute, where he studies social security reform, state and local government pensions, and public sector pay and benefits. Before joining a, uh, AEI, uh, Briggs, I'll say Briggs, uh, Biggs was the principal deputy commissioner of the Social Security Administration, who, where he oversaw SSA's policy research uh, efforts in 2005 as an associate director of the White House Economic uh, National Economic Council. He worked on social security reform in, 20, in 2001. He joined the staff of Presidential uh, Commission to strengthen social security. Biggs has been interviewed on radio and television as an expert on retirement issues and on public versus private sector compensation. He has published widely uh, in academic uh, publications as well as in daily uh, newspapers such as the New York Times and yada, yada, yada. Anyway, so let's see. In 2016, he was appointed by President Obama to, mem to be a member of the Financial Control Board overseeing reform to Puerto Rico's budget and the restructuring of the island's debt. Uh, let's see his experience. Uh, his experience is uh, he was a principal deputy commissioner uh, 2007, deputy commissioner for policy to an uh, 06 and 07, associate commissioner for retirement policy uh, in 03 and 2006, uh, social security administration, uh, associate director of national economic and white house in 2005. Uh, social Security Analysis for the Cato Institute and in, from 99 to 2003, which it seems like he actually had more experience with the, uh, at the Cato Institute so far from what it looks like I see anyway. Uh, staff member, President Commission to Strengthen Social Security 2001, and dire uh, Director of Research at Congressional Institute of 98 through 99. His education is London School of Economics, uh, University of London, Cambridge University, basically straight up English uh, economics, um, which is great as far as private, but not so well as far as um, governmental, because when you're dealing with uh, a program that is be ran by a sovereign currency nation, that to me, that doesn't really help much because when your main thing is pension uh, and uh, state and local pensions, <clears throat> the two are very different in regards to funding. Uh, the state is actually funded by the taxes that are collected within its own economy, not at a federal, not a at a federal governmental uh, level, but a state federal uh, uh, level. Uh, so Cato, and let me see, go back to this one. Oh, and no, that's not about it for. Let's see. I was oh, okay. Okay, go back up here. Let's see who we are and board members. Okay, so let's see. You might see this guy, you know, not the first one. He he has uh he has our interest at heart. Same thing with this person. This one, however, uh, is also uh his main thing was the Cato Institute as well. Um from what I yeah, uh he was a senior fellow at the Cato Institute. So uh, and that was before, I think before being appointed here. Uh, she is a current president of a consulting firm, which to me has nothing to do with um, with um, anything pension wise. Uh, let's see. And as I say, Andrew G. Biggs of Oregon, uh, who's also extensive with, uh, as I said, the Cato Institute. Uh, let's see. Anybody else? Well, let's see about the Cato Institute. Uh, this is from uh, the Influence Watcher, influencewatch.org. Let's see. Uh, let's see. A for, former Barclays Capital executive, Peter uh, Gortler, is the current president and CEO of the Cato Institute. Uh, the Cato Institute has, has received funding from, the, from a number of right of center organizations, including the Donors Capital Fund, the Lind and Harry Bradley Foundation, and the uh, Charles G. Koch Charitable Foundation. The Institute has also received funding from members of left-leaning organizations, including the Gilder Foundation, the Walton Family Foundation, Google, and Facebook. Now, I don't really, I, I wouldn't really consider those, uh, those organizations left, but whatever. Um, let's see. 
In his history, the Cato Institute was founded by libertarian activist Edward Crane, economist uh, Murray Rothbard, and businessman Charles Koch in 1977 in San Francisco with an, an initial investment by Koch. Originally called the Charles Koch Foundation, the Cato Institute was designed as a libertarian think tank to complete or complete, excuse me, compete with the American Enterprise Institute. Wait, isn't that the same one that, uh, that Mr. Big uh, is currently involved in a right of center think tank and the Brooklyn Institute, a left of center think tank. Uh, the Cato Institute has since expanded to become one of the biggest think tanks in the world and the most prominent libertarian think tank uh, in the country. In 92, Charles Koch resigned from the uh, from board of directors at the Koch industry despite remaining involved in funding the organization. In the early 2000s, the Cato Institute wo rose to national prominence uh, for his work with George W. Bush administration, working as the intellectual force behind former President George, George W. Bush, well, somebody had to, unsuccessful attempt to partially pr privatize Social Security with individual retirement accounts. If memory serves me right, Alan Greenspan, I think, was the one that was uh, testifying and got that question by Paul Ryan, asking him uh, if he thinks that these kind of um, uh, these kind of uh, uh, banking accounts would prolong Social Security, you know, make it last longer. And I believe Alan Greenspan said it does. Uh, we can print as much money as we want to, as long as there's someone to accept it. Basically, uh, I'm paraphrasing. Of course, you can, look, you can go back and 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 uh, and, and uh, watch the actual uh, thing. Anyway, so let's see. Uh, the, the institute has been created for uh, bringing libertarian policies into the mainstream uh, public uh, policy debates, publishing libertarian policy research and recommendations to lawmakers. Oops. Uh, advocacy. The Cato Institute is the most prominent libertarian think tank in the world, publishing policy research and recommendations. The Institute supports both left of center and right of center policies, pushing an agenda that emphasizes deregulation of the market and decreased government spending. So basically, uh, they are they would be setting the the economy up for disaster uh, because if you deregulate the market, every every um, uh, corporation out there that is in policy of speculation and uh, spending other people's money in regards to um, high risk investments uh, through hedge funds and other places like that. Um, yeah, that, that's a good way of going into recession. Uh, also, given the fact that if, since we are a sovereign currency, they can then make a mess like they did in 08, no, uh, 07, 08, no 09. They go to the government and begging for money, for, begging for, for basically capital to make, make themselves sovereign again. Uh, that's the reason why um, I think uh, the the Fed got involved and, uh, made, and made sure that uh, whatever that, that financial institutes had had to have at least thirty percent of reserves on hand, and I think that's, that was to make sure that there was uh, like money used for handing out cash and all that stuff. Uh, anyway, um, let's see what else. Despite supporting several far leaning policies, the the Kato Institute is a member of the State Policy Network a consortium of conservative and libertarian think tanks that focus on state-level policy reform to promote free market econo uh, eco uh, economics. Let's uh, see, economic regulation. The Cato Institute is a proponent of free markets and has called for substantial repeals of many federal economic regulations. The Institute has criticized antitrust statutes for imposing outdated regulations that harm consumers argued for the repeal of environmentalist regulations on the individuals and businesses and, and supported efforts to limit, even abolish the, regula the regulatory power of the Food and Drug Administration. The Cato Institute supports the idea of personal responsibility and individual action in the free market, arguing for a reduction in government regulation in finance, trade, labor, the internet, and telecommunication. In each of these industries, the Cato Institute has expressed support for increased privatization, 
allowing consumers and, and producers to negotiate without the interference of federal, state, or local regulations. Uh, in labor, the Cato Institute has supported efforts to repeal the federal minimum wage and pass federal law barring states from imposing minimum wages. The Institute has also called for repeal of la uh, labor laws, including the Pro-Union National Labor Relations Act, the Family and Medical Leave Act, and most of the American with Disability Act. The Cato Institute has also supported efforts to remove all public health and safety regulations, except in cases where the free market has clearly failed and has supported the implementation of mandate required that all health and safety regulation pass a cost-benefit analysis test before being implemented. The Institute is especially active in promoting free trade, arguing the tariffs and other trade barriers are regressive taxes on American citizens and increase the cost of production for American businesses. The Cato Institute has argued for the repeal of trade restrictions, transportation restrictions, such as the Jones Act and the tariffs on in, uh, in, intermediary, or sorry, intermediate goods. The institution or institute has also supported efforts to build and ratify trade liber, uh, liber, liberalization agreements, such as the Trade Pacific Partnership. The Cato Institute has drawn criticism for supporting a free market approach to the tobacco industry, arguing against increased tobacco regulations after previously receiving donations from tobacco manufacturers. Uh, the environmentalism portion. The Cato Institute has rejected left of center narratives around climate change, formerly hosting Patrick Michaels as a fellow and speaker on environmental science. Michaels has rejected typical narratives around climate change, denying that man-made climate change will result as an, as an environmental disaster. The Institute parted with Michaels and closed its Center for the Study of Science in May of 2019. Despite being generally opposed to environmentalist regulations and calling for the widespread uh, rep uh, repeal of environmental regulations on businesses, the Cato Institute has suggested places of fe uh, federal pricing uh, price on emissions, then direct uh, directed proceeds from the tax to those uh, exposed to pollutants. Yeah, no, that the taxes don't fund anything. They don't. They obviously they freaking don't. Uh, the Kino Institute supports sharp reduction in federal taxes. As of 2021, the Institute has endorsed cutting the corporate income tax rate to 15%, repealing the estate tax, repealing. Now, the estate tax, as far as I know about, is uh, if you sell a, like property of sorts, then uh, the tax on that, which I think was at one point like 50% or so, uh, that has been repealed so that means that the whole one and the whole washington uh, quote unquote medicare for all type of single payer health care majority of that uh, i believe is like 10 10.5 or something like that uh would be funded by uh the capital gains tax capital gains tax as far as i know about at a federal level was repealed as far as the, as far as the state part goes i i'm not sure about that but I don't think that there would be enough money put into that into that quote unquote program to be able to fund it. So I think to a bigger, larger degree, that's why the priority has to be at a federal level, a version of Medicare for all. Um, I heard that Bernie Sanders was saying the same old stuff, but yet he has, as far as I know about, it, he hasn't helped bring anything to the floor. I mean. Uh, what the, uh, Lindsey Graham, uh, that part in the body, um, he talks, he, he talks from both sides of his face. So does Bernie Sanders in my, in, in my thought process right now. Anyway, um, there was a Trumper that I was talking to who lives in the same building as I do, um, who did say that he would, that he was in support of raising the cap on the, uh, Social Security tax. I think it's at uh, like eight hundred forty thousand right now. When uh, Bernie Sanders and I think Elizabeth Warren uh, said they want to uh, bring it up to one hundred forty thousand. Um, from what I can see, every time they do raise that that tax, uh, that that does happen to go into 
the uh, Social Security fund. Um, I still, I don't, I say that it's not needed. I say that they had to go back into the actual legislation and say, will always be solvent, meaning always be paid, does not need taxes. So this way, people like these people uh, have no power whatsoever as far as uh, cutting Social Security, cutting Medicare, cutting Medicaid, you know, stuff like that. So their power would be over on that if they were to just put in that Social Security will always be solvent, no matter what because we are a sovereign currency country. And yeah, it's like, I'm, I'm always getting kind of sick of saying it only because of the fact that people need to learn how to do this or people need to learn more about it by going to realprogressives.org, uh, looking up uh, Warren Mosler, looking up Steve Grumbines, looking up uh, Stephanie Kelton, looking up uh, Mike, uh, Mike Norman, looking at people like that. There are a lot of more experienced uh, MMTers, uh, economists, uh, people like that than me. So I can only try to interpret what I can at, at these things and tell you that when Biden nominates a guy like Mr. Big, uh, which sounds like a really bad um, villain from a, I don't know, a daredevil actually i think that was a uh, i think that was an actual uh villain from the from the movie daredevil anyway i digress on that anyway my point being is when you have someone like a uh, joe biden who claims to be like leftish and everyone on the right wants to call him left there is no way in hell he can be considered left at all nothing not one part of him is left it's center the right, period. Especially when you are more than likely going to have at least two board, uh, board of governors on, on the Social Security board being a former Cato employee of some kind. Then you also had the president of a freaking consultant firm. And you had one time uh, Ms. McConnell's wife on there, which was back in 2001. So please tell me, how is Social Security, the board, not corrupt? How are they not trying to privatize the fucking thing? They are. They're trying to, uh, they're trying to uh, privatize all of it. And they just couldn't, they couldn't do it because they knew that all the politicians that, vote, that would have voted for that would have gotten their butts handed to them in the polls and, and, and at, the, at, the, uh, at the ballot box. Anyway, uh, let's see. This is the uh, Andrew Biggs. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, I believe, is it in here? Let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. I think he, I think he uh, kind of like understudied under Greenspan. If I get that right, let me double check on this. Let me see, is this it? Maybe. But yeah, uh, American Enterprise Institute, yeah, which works with Cato. So either way, uh, let's see, where the heck was it? Wow, okay. What did you say? I'm just, I could have swear I saw that he won these federal, yeah, better federal budget. Let's see if there's anything like that. Oh, yeah. Let's see, mm, I guess he's a scholar in that hollow. Uh, no, that's not where I was looking for. Not that one. Now, this one uh, is an article he wrote, uh, as you can see, in 2015, so seven years ago. Investment based transition cost. Oops. Right, boy. Uh, costs associated with closing the public to find public or benefit pension plan. I think this is what he's referring to as far as closing social security going into the benefit pension plan. Many policymakers are exploring reforms to pension plans for state and local government employees, such, uh, such as shifting newly hired employees to, to define contribution or cash balance plans. 
However, some have argued that, oh, shoot, come on. Uh, let's see, contribution or cash balance plans. However, some, are, uh, some have argued that such conversions may entail transition costs that make uh, reforms pro uh, prohibitively costly. If successful pensions reform is to be enacted, policymakers should understand what transition costs do and do not mean for terminated pension plans. A new study, uh, a new study for Mar uh, Marquetas Center of George Mason University explores investment-based transition costs and calculated and calculates optimal investment portfolios for pension plans, both that both those that remain open and new uh, participants and those that have been closed. And this is the first policy study of this kind to an, an, uh, analyze investment-based transition costs for public sector pension plans. The difference in portfolio allocations between open and closed pensions is small and takes place only over long periods. The study concludes that claims of large transition costs have been greatly exaggerated. To, okay, so the, there's the uh, link there. Summary, uh, funding levels for state and local government pension plans have been on, an ongoing issue since the onset of the Great Recession. Funding shortfalls nationwide raid, uh, range from the approximately $1 trillion to more than Four trillion annual requirement required contributions to public plans have more than doubled over the past decade, imposing a financial strain for many governments have been unable to bear. Some governments have failed to make a required contribution, slowing the recovery from the financial hit taken in the wake of the econ economic downturn. In response, policymakers are considering a range of options including replacing defined benefit plans with defined contributions or cash balance plans. Actually, as, as I was reading that, I was remembering something that that uh, that uh, Lindsey Graham had said, and he was referring to Social Security. He was uh, saying that uh, Social Security can be um, compared uh, to Greece in regards to insolvency. Biggest problem there is the fact that Greece is a is not a is a part of a union by uh, of the EU, whereas Social Security is a program within a is is not a state is in a state but it's not a state in regards to country of that of that kind, so it's actually a part of a sovereign currency making a sovereign currency uh, country. So in no way can it be considered a a Greece style. Uh, a Greece style entity as far as El Port goes, because Greece has to go back to the leading government and ask for more money, whereas in Social Security can always be solvent. It doesn't require federal taxes. It requires just funding as far as just through keystrokes, just through like, okay, we're going to put this amount in this in this place right here. We don't need to collect taxes first. We could just put the freaking money in there and it will be allocated to everybody such as myself. So that's, that, as I was reading that, I was kind of thinking about that. Like, okay, I should probably say this as far as the program goes. Anyway, so you can read the rest of this if you'd like to, uh, mccardos.org. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I was looking up um, Social Security Act and all stuff earlier. If you want to, we can go, you can go right here and look this up too. I was also looking up, um, uh, where is it at? Is it? Uh, no, but I still can't believe the freaking out. Uh, 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 Mitch's wife was a secretary of labor and trustee at the same time. I, anyway, yeah. And all this crazy shit to me. Anyway, um, let's see what else. <clears throat> So yeah, Biden tapped this guy to uh, be on the board. I think it's the dumbest thing you could fucking do if he wants to say the fucking thing. Uh, and actually, this, yeah, that's a different thing. Uh, where, let's see where I was. Is it? And eh, what the hell? And 
2001 Social Security tax increase. Uh, the maximum amount of earnings subject to Social Security payroll tax will increase to $80,400 from $76,200. Uh, this was again 2001, so 2002. Um, let's see. Yeah, so they they're making it look like that if they raise it, if only they raise the taxes on those with higher income, can Social Security be sovereign? It can't. I mean, it, it can in that regard, but it doesn't have to be. That that's why that's uh, what I'm trying to get through to you guys. Taxes taxes don't usually uh, uh, fund for anything. If uh, if spending is done, that means that they tax it out at the end of the day uh, or in, at the end of the process there. But as far as Social Security, the only thing you have to do is just say that it's always what you paid for, is always solvent. Uh, yeah, they don't actually need to do this as far as that part goes. That's pretty much the gist of what I'm trying to say and pretty much what I wanted to go over. Let me stop with the sharing. So once again, if you want to learn more about how we can actually fund all this, you can go to where you see realprogressive.org. Uh, let's see, on the 25th, I will be downtown Columbus. Uh, there is, yeah, I want to say anti-gun thing uh, that I will be covering. Um, yeah, maybe I can get that. Let me see if I can share this. I, I do have a problem sometimes as far as sharing and not sharing. So let me come over here. And let me see if I can go back over here. And let's see. Not that one. Let's see. Support trans, no matter what. Uh, where is this thing at that I put up here? Like, I hope I'm not wasting you guys' time while I'm doing this. Anyway, point being, well, actually, let me see. Should be events. There we go. Call to end gun violence. This is what I'm doing um, uh, this Saturday, I believe. There we go. Uh, support them. Uh, come on, see us as far as that part goes. Uh, the uh, Saturday, 12 p.m., a call to end gun violence. Uh, provide empathy and support for victims and survivors. Provide awareness and calls for action to reform gun laws around the community. Humanize and uplift stories about people affected by gun violence. Now, it doesn't say the actual location. Let me see if I can. Uh, it will be West Columbus, Ohio. Oh, okay. So there's one part I won't be able to go to. Oh, thank you. It's 4.30, huh? I might, I might be able to go to that. I'm not sure yet. Anyway, point being is, uh, I'll be covering it uh, this Saturday. Uh, check uh, your local group progressive on Facebook for that live. That's much I want to say as far as the part goes. Stop sharing. Thanks for watching. I hope you understood what I was talking about. I was kind of all over the place there, but I'm hoping you understood it. And I'm hoping that I'm hoping that people get their heads under butts and try to get open primaries in every state and get uh, ranked choice ballot uh, ballot uh, ranked choice paper ballots going because. Even though that, I mean, I had a conversation with someone on on Twitter last night involving someone who was a member of DSA, who admitted that DSA was working with the with the Democrats, and I'm like, okay, well, when I asked, uh, what do you get? What is DSA getting out of the arrangement with the with Democrats? They pretty much just love and uh, insults at me. That sort of thing. Um. Anyway, the point being is um, the only left groups out there that I can see is real progressives because, I mean, as a 501c3 organization, uh, I don't think we have ballot uh, uh, ballot block, uh, blocks, I guess it's called, uh, where you were able to actually run as, as the party. 
Uh, it's not a party, it's an organization. But if you look at realprogressives.org, um, go on to our YouTube channel, uh, Real Progressives in Action on YouTube, uh, go on to my stuff, which obviously you'll be able to see on, on after this. But anyway, uh, check out realprogressives.org, volunteer, donate. Uh, there's an event uh, in your area uh, that is progressive or a pro abortion or whatever the case may be. If it's left, uh, let us know if it's in Columbus and I will do my best to live stream it. Um, if it's anywhere else, let, let us know. And maybe we have someone in that area that can cover it. Who knows? Um, anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for listening to my ram ramble. Um, but please check me out. Please check out progressives.org. Please check them out on uh, Facebook, on uh, Twitter, uh, on uh, Instagram, on, let's see, da, 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 on MeWe, I guess, uh, and other places like that. So pretty much any platform that, that enables um, content to be shared and put up. Anyways, thanks for watching. Peace out for now.